Hey drummers, hope you're well. Shout out to Simon who was working on this today. This is just a little reminder of what I think is one of the all-time great ways to practice something, to work something up to speed. Remember when you're playing your pieces, you're playing your tunes, this is from the uh, grade six version of Smells Like Teen Spirit, you might recognize that, but this is just an example. When you're working on your stuff in your songs, what a lot of drummers do is they put the song on and they bash along and they hope for the best. And sometimes, honestly, that can be quite a good way to do it. A lot of those times, if you've got a certain fluency with what you're playing, like main grooves, for example, are gonna work great, but there'll always be bits, there'll always be moments in songs that we have to take out and work on separately. And this is just a reminder, because I'm always quite surprised when the people that I work with or people that I you know, chat to about this, don't use this. I just think it's complete dynamite. And that is good old slow to fast to slow in stick control in 1935. George, amazing book by the way, George Lawrence Stone uh, told us that practice with the metronome is recommended at several different speeds, but then to do it again without the metronome in the open and closed style, i.e. starting very slowly, gradually accelerating to top speed and then slowing down again, finally ending at the original tempo. He also went on to say that practice at all times with relaxed muscles, stopping at the slightest feeling of tension. So this is what you do. Say that you're working on this opening fill from Smells Like Teen Spirit, right? Famous Dave Grohl drum fill. Yeah, I know it was inspired by the Gap Band. Yes, I've seen the video with Pharrell Williams. Like, so I've made a video about that as well. I'll link to that below. So this is just, again, it's just an example. So what you do, say that you're new to this, right? Say that you, have, you haven't ever played this song before. There's quite a bit going on. You've got flams on the beat. You've got bass drum on the E and the R, like the offbeat 16th. And you've got the hi-hat on the ands. I'll slow it down. And say that's all quite new and you're building that up. I've got to say this moment in this song is one of the maybe top 10 things that drummers, when they're learning, they're starting off, come to me and say, can, can I learn this? How long, is it going to take, how long is it going to take me to learn this? Is this reasonable to learn this? So it is quite tricky if you're just starting off. This is again, grade six, but the, the principle here of how you work on it, I think is one that applies to all drummers, all levels, as far as I'm concerned, certainly works for me. So it is very, very simple, but the, the point is you have to start slow. You've got to let your hands and your feet and your brain see it, right? Like digest it, let them experience it. Otherwise, what we're trying to do is we're trying to play it before we've learned it. It's a classic human error. We all do it. I've catch myself doing this in just about every other area of life outside of drumming. But that's what we're trying to do. If we try to go too fast too soon, we're trying to play it before we've learned it. Let's go nice and slow. So in this case, flam, kick, hi-hat, kick. Three times, flam, kick, hi-hat. Bam, kick, hi hat, kick, bam, kick. So I reckon at that speed, almost anybody, right, would with a bit of repetition would be able to put it together. So that's that's getting your foot in the door, like getting at first, you might need to talk yourself through it, say the things one at a time, whatever you've got to do to get it lined up at some sort of tempo, that's a good place to start. So that's your starting point, kind of assuming you can do that. And a lot of people say, well, I, I can do that, but I can't get any faster. They say, oh, it's hard. I'm struggling to play it faster. Work on it. Mate. I think this is a lost, the lost art of working on something, like keeping going, like be determined, be committed to the, the process of building it up and repeat, repeat, repeat. As the great Tommy Igo uh, reminds us often, clearly we need it. Uh, the value of repetition just can't be overstated. So this is what you would do, slow, to fast to slow, where fast, and I, I always interpret fast as like that improvement zone or that slightest feeling of tension. It's that point where you can still do it, but you start to feel that little bit of tension creeping in. That's your fast when you're working on stuff. And then hold it there for a bit and then bring it back down. So let's do that, do that now. So I'm just gonna repeat. Now let's go a tiny bit quicker. And when you're doing it here, for example, all of this is just for example, ask yourself, like, how does this feel? Does this feel like a bit of tension is coming in? Or is it okay? If it's okay, keep going.
and so on. Now, you might find you get to a certain point, you probably will, I certainly would have done with this uh, when I was starting off, you know, in the first few years. You might find you get, get to a point where the bass drum starts dropping out of sync a bit, you know. If it starts falling apart like that, that's cool. That's Again, this is all part of the process, right? You have to go through this, this stage. That just means you're practicing it a little bit too fast. Bring it back to the point where, again, I always think of it as that improvement zone. My reference is that slightest feeling of tension or like you can just about play it, but there's that feeling that it's not quite 100% sitting, but it is, it's kind of acceptable. You're just about playing it, do you know what I mean? Another good way to think of it is a tension scale. If when we start very slowly, say that we're like a one or a two out of 10, tense uh, I always think of like the fast the improvement zone is like a four or five not crazy tense but like you just a little bit of tension has crept in say that you got to here and you just that felt that little bit of tension was there that's okay as long as you're getting away with it as long as you're uh, it's playing it and it's acceptable but like you're not feeling 100% comfortable that's the zone hold it there bring it back down so I'm going to finish here by doing exactly this I'm going to start real slow I'm going to work up to full speed I might go even a bit beyond full speed I'm going to hold it there for a bit I'm going to bring it back down and this is just a reminder like I say shout out to Simon and everyone else I just think this is such a dynamite way of working things up I think this is for a lot of people just something that they don't do so I think it bears it bears repeating if you do do this obviously excuse to apologies to repeat myself over and over again but evidently a lot of people this is news to so difficult bits in songs take them out work on them sure with your metronome is great but slow to fast to slow like this just an absolute dynamite all-time classic way to work something up and then do the reps you gotta not just once but several times repeat 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 you build on it bit by bit by bit you chip it out of a block of stone and uh, obviously the principle this is based on is the tempo at which or the principle at work here is the tempo at which you're in that improvement zone will necessarily increase as you repeat you'll get acclimatized comfortable but staying relaxed at that particular tempo and then obviously the next time the next time the next time how who knows how many repeats it would be but you get more comfortable at that speed that's it man that's what it's all about that repetition and getting into that zone is magic live in that zone and incredible things will happen in your life as, as i see it not just in drumming if you get into that zone where you can do something but you're being challenged you're like the at the edge of your comfort zone or just tipping over into this is a bit challenging man if you can live there what a change to your drumming and to your life is going to happen. It's just how I see it. So uh, let's do it. Here we go. Nice and slow. Okay, pick it up a bit. there you have it slow to fast to slow absolute dynamite way to work something up to refine it to smooth it out if you're sitting there saying oh i can't do this it's hard i'm struggling with this it's too fast i can't i really people say i struggle to play fast i can't play fast you've got to build it you've got to work on it you've got to go to work you've got to say i commit to this process of working on this thing and working towards it and age old cliche but one of the truest things we come across when we're learning this this instrument if you fo focus and really uh, fall in love with that process of working on it the result will take care of itself just disregard the result because the result will just come to you if you get in that improvement zone where it's just that little bit you know challenging every day as often as you can every time you practice the results just come to you they'll just take care of itself thanks for watching as always shout out to simon see you soon cheers